Hello to you. Good morning. Guten Morgen. Good morning. Bonjour. This event is brought to you by Comar in cooperation with its partners, IBM and SoftServe. Uh, our meeting today will be dedicated to outsourcing trends, IT outsourcing trends in Western Europe in 2021. A very exciting and hot topic, especially in context of a post-COVID new normal world which we currently enter. Uh, I invite you to drop your questions in the chat function throughout the entire event and we will address them uh, at the end of our session. This event will be recorded and delivered to you post factum uh, online. So let us start. Uh, once again, I invite to you to stay with us throughout the entire event. I extend a warm welcome to all of you and thank you for taking the time um, to join us today. Today, I'm uh, joined with uh, top professional professionals from IT industry uh, who kindly agreed to take part in our panel discussion. Um, following a very short introduction by some insights from the uh, freshly, very newly published uh, report, a white paper by Comar, uh, which was commissioned together with uh, its partner, uh, Icon Institute, also a publisher of MIT Sloan Management Review Poland, uh, following a very short uh, insight and uh, key trends digest from it, I will invite our guests to take part in the roundtable discussion and share their point of view, their insights, their experience relative to IT, IT outsourcing uh, trend and uh, uh, insights from their world, from their point of view. Uh, it will be my pleasure today to be your host. My name is Paula Vasovska. Uh, I am a business practitioner from the ICT industry uh, with over 20 years experience. Um, I hold the uh, management functions in such companies as Cisco, uh, Nokia or Dell. Uh, I have very similar experience with my guests, but my guests are the ones who you will be listening to today, not me. Uh, if possible, I share some of my experience as well throughout the questions, uh, which I carry from uh, Western Europe, Central and Eastern Europe, emerging markets, but also from Silicon Valley in um, California. So it's time now to introduce my uh, distinguished guests who accepted invitation to uh, this event. Uh, let me welcome to our roundtable discussion Bartłomi Kluska, who is with us today. Bartłomi is the ICT Consulting Director at Comar, uh, where he's responsible for data center and cloud, as well as IT outsourcing products uh, for the area of DACH. He focuses on improving awareness and cloud-based services, finding some healthy balance between uh, performance and total cost of ownership. Bartłomiej, thank you very much for finding the time to join us. Thank you so much. Uh, secondly, I would like to welcome to our discussion Paweł Łopatka. Welcome, yeah. Paweł. A VP yeah. Country Manager at SoftServe, also a Vice President Strategic Board Member at ABSL. Uh, Paweł is a mentor and coach for startup environments. He graduated from Apollo University, uh, Aberte University, Dundee, and a doctoral studies in the field of strategic management from University uh, of Economics in Wrocław. He gained global experience in companies such as uh, Redney, Nokia, Siemens, and BBC Scotland. Welcome, Pavel. Welcome. Uh, we coincidentally have also another distinguished guest whose name happens to be Paweł as well. So Paweł Raczyński, uh, let me warmly welcome you to our panel discussion. Paweł uh, is a global technology services leader for Poland and Baltics in support of Kindrill. Paweł um, is from IBM, uh, over 20 years of experience, and uh, he specializes in developing and implementing comprehensive IT services and transformational strategies. Some of them tend to be complex. He's passionate, as he says, about technological innovations and uh, practical uh, their business uh, application. Uh, at IBM, Pavel manages uh, that technology services uh, unit 
and he is responsible for introducing Kindrill brand to the Polish and Baltic uh, Baltics market. And these three distinguished guests will be uh, our participants in the panel discussion. Uh, to any one of them and to all of them, if you have any questions, again, let me reiterate, please drop any questions might you have in the chat function. We will address them as we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the newly uh, published white paper by Comarch and its uh, partners uh, convey some important insights uh, on trends in IT um, outsourcing. Let me just cherry pick a couple of them <clears throat> as we go. First, business reasons for outsourcing. As you see, <clears throat> as you can hear, my voice is slightly weak. It'll come back. Who is now back in fashion? Who is now back in line? And this is the cost reduction, ladies and gentlemen. Cost reduction is back in the game. It seems that the main reason are represented by over 70% of our respondents claim that it's cost reduction that mainly is driving them towards outsourcing. Second place is taken by flexibility, also speed to market. The report, the white paper, which was issued by Comar, also outlines this normality and this role. Uh, you might be interested that the white paper will be delivered to you also <coughs> following this event. So let us have a look at the growth of IT, IT outsourcing market. As you see, over the years, the trend is upwards. The IT outsourcing market grows significantly. From here, you have a look at the data from 2010 until 2019, you see that the information technology outsourcing grows as well as business process outsourcing as well. There is no sign of stopping and there is no slowing down. You might observe and uh, ask your um, panel discussion members as well, what might be the future for IT outsourcing market? And I'm sure you have your thoughts on this as well. So one of the very important take out an insight from the white paper is both the method and the location uh, destinations for outsourcing. It seems that there are three predominant outsourcing methods. One of them is nearshoring that involves outsourcing processes uh, that are less distance, so closer to where you are. And uh, in the past year, especially in context of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this is certainly has grown as a trend and might be the trend for the future, focusing on near uh, by locations such as Poland or, or Ukraine. Further, uh, offshoring, offshoring, you know, very, very well for, uh, for many years, uh, consists in um, outsourcing selected processes to foreign entity, uh, which might be far away, uh, mainly due to uh, much lower operating costs and uh, especially uh, much lower operating uh, uh, cost labor. What are such locations, India, the Philippines or China? We also have uh, another method, which is onshoring, uh, and it's interesting uh, the uh, execution of selected processes to contractor operating in some uh, uh, country. Uh, for example, France. You might observe a very interesting, however, a less practical method. In our opinion, uh, we will be very interested in your opinion, which is unsourcing in a way a new trend whereby companies uh, set up some online communities with uh, peers, uh, but also with their customers to allow the users to receive 
a voluntary peer-to-peer -peer support. And this method, as you may know, has significant limitations, both in privacy, but also in uh, professionalism of, uh, of the method of the service. So here we go. Uh, we have uh, the following methods of outsourcing. And what seem to be uh, predominant destinations? As you know, uh, mainly around the world, we look at five outsourcing destinations, Poland being a very important one of them, uh, India, the Philippines, um, China and Ukraine. In the white paper which you'll receive, you'll have a quote uh, stating that some firms um, in countries as Germany, for example, uh, in now in the post-COVID-19 world will not be as keen uh, to invest in China or other parts of Asia which are far, far away. However, um, they will be still keen to outsource um, in uh, good value locations that are nearby. And maybe this will not happen next year. We'll see uh, how this goes according to opinion of our par panel participants. But over the next few years, this certainly will constitute as a trend. This quote was, was given by the Vienna Institute Deputy uh, Director in May uh, of 2020. So as you see, um, the report will include uh, insights on both methods, destinations, the growth um, and others. But now let us uh, hear what our panel discussion uh, participants have uh, to say, what are their experiences as well as their insights. Uh, and if I may, I would like to raise a first a question uh, to our distinguished guests. So considering different uh, types of businesses, different types of sectors, areas of their operation, also their different speeds um, of product development, business development, innovation, uptake, and finally, their differences in IT uh, organizations, their legacy, their modernizations, and the, their uh, transformation or restructurization. Ladies and gentlemen, or rather gentlemen in our discussion today, what are, according to you, overarching reasons for outsourcing IT in 2021? I will ask each one of you to take um, a voice uh, for about two minutes or so, so that we can proceed with uh, several questions. So if I may, Bartłomiej, would you like to start? Reasons for outsourcing IT. Of course, my pleasure. Can you hear me well? Very well, thank you. Okay, perfect. So um, I would say from um, our experience uh, uh, on the dark market, uh, mainly because that's what I'm responsible for, but also globally where Comar operates with outsourcing services, uh, I can only confirm uh, the trend that the major reason uh, this year, last year, basically in the era of the uh, economic recession, and uh, COVID-19 pandemic is the uh, uh, is the cost cutting reasons. That's the uh, that's the most common um, um, driver for uh, companies to turn to outsourcing or to expand their outsourcing um, um, uh, ratio in uh, in um, in their IT departments in their IT services. Uh, but it's not the only one. Yeah, that's important to say. It's not the only uh, driver. Uh, we see that uh, we see an increase uh, in, in our negotiations in discussions with customer uh, increase in, um, in, in, in discussions about uh, about costs about um, um, lowering our rates and, and so on so uh, this is clearly uh, uh, showing that, uh, that that money is important again uh, it is, it seems that it wasn't for uh, like a couple of years uh, uh, there were other reasons uh, on the top but as, as mentioned, uh, since uh, more or less since the start of pandemic, with some delay, we see that it comes back, and the statistics show uh, show that confirm that. Um, the other reasons uh, remain, uh, I would say, also the same as as before in the previous years: uh, innovation um, and the uh, need for uh, speeding up uh, the introduction of um, um, digi digitalization. Uh, and uh, new technologies in companies. That's what uh, um, makes many companies uh, to search for uh, for experience uh, external service providers. Yeah, they hope that um, with such provider, the, their uh, their way to innovate 
to automate processes uh, will be quicker. And that's, of course, true. Yeah? That's, that's why uh, we are here for. Yeah? So I would say these two reasons are, uh, from our perspective, um, what we noticed, uh, the, the, the main ones now. Thank you very much, Bartomi. Uh, Paweł Łopatka, your reasons according to your expertise and experience. So pandemic shows that uh, times are changing, but uh, in general, IT outsourcing brings many benefits. It allows to save time and money while increasing the quality of service we're providing. This is why the role of outsourcing is in IT is growing year over year, which can be seen in number of our clients that we work on a constant basis. So today, IT outsourcing not only supports business goals, but is often a driven force for changing and changes and innovation in our clients' organizations. New technologies appear on the market, and this is also visible. And for example, traditional banking, yes, this is uh, one example where we can see that. This opens opportunities for companies such as ours on that call, really, uh, in industries like fintech, oil and gas, retail, energy. And this is actually the situation that we see. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, and the same question I would like uh, for Pavel uh, to be addressed uh, other uh, other Pavel, please. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. So look, uh, we work in, uh, as a part of Global Technology Services Unit. We work with many clients, international companies, uh, but also companies who are established in, in local markets like in Poland, in Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. And, a part of uh, what colleagues were saying uh, in terms of costs, in terms of driving innovation, uh, we see that the clients are looking basically for ways to increase their competitive advantage. They do that by engaging us in, uh, in projects in, uh, in implementation of open hybrid cloud, uh, of projects in implementing automation, um, as, as part by, of course, artificial intelligence. That's, that's the hot topic. And why do they do that? They want to basically increase the attractiveness of the services provided to, to end clients. So that's, that's one aspect, so to increase the, uh, the end user experience. Second aspect is related to security. Uh, so while uh, you know, the clients are looking for, um, for the service provider to, to be as a change agent, to lead innovation programs, they are also looking for and seeking uh, the way how to secure it, how to provide services in a secure manner, how to make sure that uh, the critical data are protected. So we see the change from, um, uh, from the model that it used to be um, summarized as manage my, manage my uh, enterprise infrastructure, manage my services into the model that please help me drive the change uh, that is required. And uh, the, uh, the last aspect that I wanted to highlight is, you know, volatility. Uh, we see COVID change a lot of, uh, lot of things. Uh, we see that nowadays clients and, and users are looking for, for a flexible way of um, consuming, but also delivering the services. That is why clients are also looking for a flexible uh, commercial models, but also deliver models, models in which you can turn on the service, turn it off, just like you, we would do um, with USB devices. Paweł Raczyński, thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, what you hear from our experts on top reasons for outsourcing IT in 2021. Please contemplate what might be your reasons specific to your industries, to your sectors, to your speed of uptake of innovation and uh, transformation. Um, if you would like, share those comments uh, and questions with us over chat function and we will come back to that at the end of the session. Uh, let us now move on to another very important topic which was um, just preliminarily highlighted um, uh, by the uh, white paper uh, that Comarch commissioned which are available options and types of IT outsourcing. As mentioned earlier, we have onshoring, offshoring, nearshoring, uh, we also have the unshoring completely un, uh, un, uh, uh, lack of outsourcing, but just relying on your customers and peer-to-peer -peer function, which is an exotic function, but still it exists. Um, what I would like to ask our uh, panel uh, participants and distinguished guests is what are, according to them, 
uh, most desired, interesting, available IT outsourcing options and types of outsourcing. Uh, now, if I may, I would like to start with uh, Paweł Łopatka and then I will move on to Paweł Raczewski, finishing with Bartłomiej. Paweł Łopatka. Thank, thank you, Paweł. So, for sure, there are visible trends in outsourcing. A few years ago, the main motivation for outsourcing was desire to reduce cost and uh, free company resources. But this model is actually changing, it's revolutionizing on the market, yes? So now companies stop looking for outsourcing solely in terms of back office support, but start to treat it as the way to gain market advantage, yes? This is what we already discussed here, yes? To gain additional knowledge and technology between client and service providers. And nowadays we are more perceived not like outsourcers, but more like a technological partners. And this is the fact from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Super, thank you very much. Uh, Paweł Raczyński, if you may, uh, the same question to you. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with what Paweł Łopatka summarized. So definitely partnerships in terms of being a technology, in terms of uh, helping the client to uh, not only to consume the service, but also to be, to be the one who shows how to how to implement it, how to manage, how to how to deal with it, how to sell it, to, also how advising how to sell it uh, to the end users. Uh, in terms of you know what what kind of projects I see from from my perspective, I see two types of uh, two types of engagements. One is related to delivering specific um, project type of uh, of an engagement, which means um, providing specific uh, project related services when there is an end, uh, there is a definition of start and, uh, and an end of a project. But also uh, other customers are looking for so-called managed services uh, commitments when we uh, agree on the long-term partnership, uh, when the service provider becomes, as, as I mentioned, as a change agent. And, um, you know, when, when I looked at the, um, at the statistics uh, from, for example, from European Union, from Eurostat, uh, basically this data shows us that half of the enterprises uh, are engaging external suppliers in various aspects of, uh, of service provisionings. Um, we, also, uh, we also see from Eurostat data that nearly half of the enterprises are dealing with lack of skills. So that's also the gap that uh, IT service providers can uh, fill in. Very interesting. If our uh, participants of our event are um, interested further in the skills uh, domain, I would be. <laughs> Please drop us a question in the in the chat function. Uh, thank you very much, Pavel. Uh, Bartłomiej, your take on the available um, outsourcing options and types. Well, thank you. Um, from our perspective, from Comark perspective, um, I would say that uh, nearshoring is a clear winner here. Um, why? Um, we are very uh, frequently perceived as, uh, uh, I mean, Coma IT outsourcing services uh, are um, unit that's, that we provide uh, solely nearshoring services. It has a reason because, of course, we are uh, and our headquarters are placed in a in a very popular nearshoring country, looking from. Uh, the perspective of uh, Western uh, European countries, and uh, that's, uh, that uh, has an effect in our uh, marketing uh, focus and, uh, of course, in our business. So this is this is the option and, and the type of outsourcing which we, I would say, most frequently discuss with customers, and also uh, the type of service which we uh, which we provide. Um, the second, uh, I would name a kind of a hybrid option where we combine um, on sourcing uh, on site services with uh, near shoring. We have uh, various uh, such uh, such customers where we provide services on site in uh, different uh, European uh, or even outside of Europe um, countries, and they are combined with um, um, shared service desk uh, from uh, Krakow, for example. So this is a model where uh, where companies are also uh, interested in. Um, we are not providing uh, offshoring services. That's uh, um, that's not in our scope. So um, I, I wouldn't say it. Um, and of course, in, in in the discussions, we we very frequently know where uh, where the customer with their requirements is is heading to. So um, uh, I can say that the offshoring is uh, especially in the DAG area. Uh, for the German-speaking customers, and in Germany, uh, especially, 
is not very popular. And the global companies uh, which are uh, residing in Germany as well uh, have uh, typically still some part of their services uh, offshore, uh, depending, of course, on which uh, uh, what kind of service it is. Uh, but uh, it's not that common uh, uh, anymore, at least in the uh, portfolio of customers, uh, which uh, which we do have. Okay, so thank you very much, Bartuami. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for, for your take on the available options and types of IT outsourcing. It will be very interesting to observe how the situation evolves over the, uh, the, the upcoming uh, months and years. Uh, especially due to the changing environment um, in the post-COVID world, uh, where the outsourcing uh, trends will shift. Um, the white paper commissioned by Comarch might uh, shed some light uh, on this subject. And uh, please contemplate on your options and types and uh, look also for uh, partners who might be available to deliver what's best for you in the situation of the new uh, normal which we currently enter. The third question, and unfortunately the last one uh, due to constraint of time, but a very, very important one I would like to address now um, is uh, best practices and destination for out, uh, IT um, outsourcing. So there is a critical question which uh, might be asked. What makes a location, a destination, uh, a best suited a place, location for outsourcing, especially of IT? So above all the supply of specialists, I suppose, right? Um, and the cost of maintaining them um, uh, as the key feature, the level of development of IT market and the quality of education. Um, so Pavel mentioned uh, skills of customers, but also at the level of education and the com uh, comprehensiveness of language, for example, in a given a location, possibility to communicate in a preferred language. Um, what might be also important uh, to consider are some cultural differences. And um, uh, the last uh, of the important piece of this uh, puzzle are the time zones, the differences in which um, can be obviously both a gain and a pain uh, in the course of a daily um, operation for you as a business. So, uh, gentlemen, I'll, I'll start uh, now with uh, Paweł Raczynski. Um, your take on the best practices and destinations for IT outsourcing, 2021. Oh, it's definitely Poland. You know, <laughs> uh, I see that... Um, you know, in the past, when we uh, when outsourcing was uh, was starting to become popular, Asia locations like uh, like India, Malaysia, and also uh, South America, were go to markets for for the enterprises. Um, these clients uh, faced a couple of challenges. So one was one was uh, cultural fit, the other was uh, available languages, uh, then also time zones. But these, these were like physical um, physical aspects that were manageable. However, you know, when constraining when constructing business cases, they need to be taken into account. So uh, if you are designing a service that needs to run 24 seven and you, you, you want to have a service that is available from various locations, yes, you, you should factor that in. Now, uh, Recently, as, as we all know, COVID uh, changed everything around. So right now I see that physical locations is no longer uh, no longer a valid point. Even us today, we are meeting virtually, where in uh, pre-COVID world, probably we would meet uh, in a physical location. Uh, and now um, even, you know, hiring experts is, is done uh, done virtually. So that's, that's one of the changes. I see also that you know clients uh, are looking for a cultural fit between the service provider and, and and the client and the way you know how you do the business. If you are if you are also only for uh, for the money or also you want to invest or uh, give back to the community that you are uh, you are operating in, and this is one of the aspects that particularly in uh, in IBM in GTS we are very. Uh, very fun of uh, and we pay a lot of attention to participate in the good tech programs to give back to the to the communities um, so uh, from my view i uh, i see that you know definitely poland definitely uh, countries in in our region because we have we have the skills we have wonderful uh, and highly skilled uh, highly skilled 
people and uh, and also students that gets lots of uh, lots of awards. Excellent. Thank you very much, Pavel. Uh, Bartłomie, what would be your take on the destinations and uh, the best practices for IT outsourcing? Well, what, what could I say if not Poland? <laughs> this is this is for me, of course, the option number one. And uh, I would say not only for me, looking at the statistics, uh, Poland has a lot of advantages uh, as, a, as an outsourcing uh, destination especially for for european for western european countries uh, and uh, looking at the type of outsourcing uh, um, here we speak about nearshoring because poland is very close to um, to germany to other uh, european uh, western european countries so it makes uh, uh, this country a, a very good um, candidate for uh, for looking for a provider and here we also have uh, um, various providers uh, available. Yeah, we have uh, native uh, Polish companies like Comark, uh, but uh, status for today, I think, uh, almost every big uh, um, global company which is uh, which is providing also outsourcing services is located in Poland. Uh, we have an example of, uh, of IBM here as well. Uh, so th this is this is a good destination for sure, and uh, the reasons. Um, uh, are, speaks for themselves. I mean, uh, already mentioned by Paweł Raczyński, we have uh, um, skilled uh, personnel, we have uh, many, many good universities which uh, yearly uh, release uh, to, to, to the market, to the job market, thousands of uh, uh, perfectly trained specialists. Um, and this is, these are developers, but also other, uh, other um, IT uh, specialists. So this is a very good reason. Um, among uh, the, the foreign languages which are being uh, taught in Poland, we have on the on the first place is English, of course, uh, but the second is German and the third is, is French. So it also says uh, uh, where our uh, our students are, are heading to with their education. Yeah, uh, uh, they uh, they are what they are capable of. Um, there are um, there are also other good, uh, very interesting numbers which have been presented in the white paper which you mentioned, Paula. So I would also encourage everybody to have a look at these numbers uh, and statistics uh, and to convince uh, yourselves to, uh, to to this destination. So that's uh, that's from my perspective, uh, of course, the uh, the very good uh, destination. Um, if I may say uh, about the best practices, something, or we come back to this as well, Paula. How, how... And please go ahead. This question goes both to the destinations mm -hmm. and best practices. Feel free. Uh, all right, because uh, if if we look at the uh, um, typical companies trying to uh, start uh, outsourcing, uh, um, or is even already in outsourcing and looking to extend the services. What, uh, what is important to, to have in mind? Uh, we also would probably mention that in the summary, but um, what we face and what are the typical problems by the customers and the typical saying, uh, and never shop when you're hungry. And uh, this, is, uh, um, this is a situation which uh, really occurs in a, in a bigger organizations where, for example, CIO has a big ambition to uh, innovate, to, uh, to, to, to introduce cloud first and, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, then um, a certain orders are released uh, uh, top down, uh, which, uh, which um, ends up uh, with uh, IT managers uh, looking uh, for service providers without a real proper analysis of what they uh, actually need. Yeah. And this is uh, this leads to problems. Uh, uh, they don't uh, look, for example, if we talk about the user support, they don't really analyze what the users want um, or not properly analyze what the users want and need. They look at the trends, uh, um, automation, ITIL, and so on, uh, and try to enforce this in their organization and also look provider for providers who will do this. And of course, there are there, there's a number of providers who can do this. That's no question. Uh, but the problem is uh, when it comes to the uh, transition to the provision of the services, uh, the problems uh, really uh, start to occur because the user is uh, not really satisfied with the new model. Yeah, so um, that would be uh, one of the <laughs> main uh, um, 
pieces of advice which I could uh, give uh, the proper analysis of uh, the situation before you decide for outsourcing in the first place and then uh, decide for uh, a model of outsourcing, also destination of outsourcing. Yeah, this is uh, um, and comes uh, out of it. Uh, and then a decision for uh, for for outsourcing and uh, and long term commitment. Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I would uh, stop at this moment. Maybe. I know you can. Somebody, I know so. you can talk for long. It, <laughs> it is, it's our passion, but we have to give some voice to Pavel of Wopatka. Course. And I uh, expect there will be a thriller news. Maybe we'll say something different than the previous speakers. I expect the thriller <laughs> similar to some kind of Netflix production. Uh, what are you going to say, Pavel? <laughs> oh, very interesting. Uh, like speech by Pavel and Bartomi, and uh, I cannot not agree. So for sure we are there, yes. And but uh, I will go from different angle. Like uh, software grew from uh, Ukraine. That was a Ukrainian company. But the location number one that we are expanding outside of Ukraine is definitely Poland. Yes. Why? Why is that? The demand is huge all over the world. But being a great technological partner, not in classic understanding of where usually companies control the process, but being a partner innovator and uh, deliverable like company on site of product development and software development means that we need to have locations that are suitable for our clients and customers yes and definitely poland is the location to be here why we have great talent we have high value services that are on high demand everywhere we are in pretty good time zone we can operate early morning with singapore late evening with california we can operate with holimia all day long yes and this is actually what is the most attractive uh, for us and for our customers. Like we are in a really great spot, hotspot, I can call it, for outsourcing business or differently for technological partner partnership with our customers. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Thank you very much, Pavel Wopatka. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for now, uh, what we've discussed is the reasons for I I outsourcing um, IT in 2021. We talked about locations and the best methods of outsourcing and um, finally also of um, uh, available destinations. So from my side, uh, maybe I'll just top what our um, distinguished guests have mentioned. Um, in favor of nearshoring and in favor of Poland, uh, maybe this was not mentioned and forgive me if it was, but I would like to definitely stress it again. So for example, the um, uh, standards of IP protection and data security, this definitely stands out as one of the reasons um, in your paper which was mentioned uh, several times already, titled How IT Outsourcing Becomes Part of the New Normal, you will have a list of 20, 20 reasons um, why you should consider nearshoring and uh, Poland. So uh, here, uh, this is one of them, the IP protection data security, on top of what our guests already mentioned. Um, I would also like to outline the best value for money in software development. Um, uh, what definitely cannot go unbolded, so to say, is highly skilled and a uh, young group of professionals who also speak a variety of languages, including um, English and white pool of IT uh, graduates. Uh, a market of uh, IT, which is dynamically growing, um, huge experience in fintech projects, um, popularity of agile methodologies and approaches, um, which are widely known and uh, practiced, uh, and good uh, high quality technical infrastructure, uh, not to mention European Union common market, uh, which is important for um, DACH and uh, Benelux, I uh, suppose, just like proximity uh, to Europeans' major uh, financial centers. So uh, this is as a summary, just to top uh, what our speakers have um, already mentioned. Uh, if I may uh, ask our uh, panel participants just for one or two sentences as a summary, um, just collapsing everything that we said so far on destinations, on reasons, on objectives and methods, um, just one uh, final statement uh, for our panel discussion, if I may. Uh, Bartłomiej, may I start with you? Just one final statement in our discussion. Thank you. Well, I, I, I would start from uh, from the other side. Maybe first of all, I would wish uh, all of us that this whole um, current situation uh, stop uh, as soon as possible, and we all will be able to go back to the 
<laughs> to the previous uh, reality and uh, maybe going very controversial that the auto, uh, outsourcing services will not be uh, needed anymore. Uh, but this is, uh, um, well, hopefully we'll go back to the uh, normality, but uh, uh, the situation where outsourcing will not be needed uh, will not happen for sure. That That's what we know. Uh, and this is not only due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but uh, due to various other good reasons for outsourcing. Yeah. So um, as a final word, final sentence, I would like to highlight uh, to everybody that uh, it's very important to uh, know what you need, know, know your needs, recognize your need, analyze your needs, and then uh, look for uh, or decide for a proper type of outsourcing. Thank you for this concise uh, summary. Uh, Paweł Raczyński, may I ask you for your uh, final thoughts on our topic? Yeah, my, my final thought is the following. So nowadays, it's it's not it's not longer a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship. Uh, it's one-to-many. So when you engage with a client, typically, you also uh, need to become a partner to the other organizations. So, for example, we have projects uh, that we work jointly with Coma uh, to to help our clients drive a change. So definitely partnership, definitely partnership that drives uh, innovation, that helps clients implement the change, but also give back to the communities. Because, uh, you know, we are, you know, in IBM, we are perfectly aware that, you know, the, that the impact um, any technology has on, on us. Uh, it may be positive, it may be, uh, it may not necessarily be always positive. So, for example, you know, COVID and the digital divide, uh, when we had to move, uh, not only uh, us working move, uh, we had to move to, uh, to the digital workspace, but also with the school. So how do we ensure that uh, we, we do not, we, we um, make everyone uh, inclusive, so we do not divide the, um, the society, and we make basically the change uh, that is good, the change that is uh, contributing to not only to the clients, not only to the end users, but also to the community as a whole. Pavel Raczynski, alleluia. Let it be the truth uh, for the upcoming years. Very, very smart and uh, indeed an insightful conclusion. And uh, Pavel uh, Wopatka, if I may ask you for your conclusions of our discussion, please. The conclusion is that, uh, you know, we can expect uh, from my perspective that the market demand will grow for next five years. But I think what is really important is this word sustainability that uh, is really popular now. We should run our business in a sustainable way with partners, with clients, with customers and make sure that we deliver value for us, for ourselves and for the society around us as well. Yes. And in that way, being a real technological partner, we can achieve many common goals and go towards the brighter future, yes? Maybe that's a good summary. That's a perfect summary, Pavel, indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, our uh, panel discussions who kindly um, accepted invitation to um, this session shared with us their insights, uh, their experience, their, their thoughts. Um, and I thank them very much for it, both Pavel's and Bartłomiej. Um, here is the time now for you uh, to uh, drop us questions if you still have some. We already have some questions coming in, so um, uh, we'll now address them. Uh, but it's very, very important at the end of our discussion to uh, kind of have a quick checklist what to keep in mind uh, considering IT outsourcing. And I think many of the topics, if not most, were already mentioned by Pavel and Pavel and Bartłomiej. But uh, may I just uh, outline to you uh, what you should uh, keep in mind and be aware of. So, for example, uh, in search for a, um, a right partner for IT outsourcing. So such things as precise description of the matter of the contract. Uh, further, uh, what's in the package, what's included, what's excluded, because frequently what's excluded is extra charge and then you may have very many extra charges on top of it. Um, procedures, uh, competences and certifications durations of the contract, protection, data protection, security, scope of liability, incredibly important, some legal matters, and um, to top uh, uh, the list, um, not the least important, uh, very important service level agreements of those partners. So just keep in mind all those when choosing uh, your uh, next partner, but also choosing your next uh, IT outsourcing destination, uh, hopefully in favor of nearshoring and hopefully in favor of Poland as we um, all 
uh, today discussed. So uh, coming to questions which have um, uh, come uh, to us throughout this session, um, I will, uh, in the interest of, uh, in the interest of time, not to hold you for too long uh, at our uh, session, just ask a couple of them, if I may. Mm, so uh, first of all, might be as follows as I read here in our chat function. Can you give an example of projects where you cooperated with external partners and uh, gave back to the community? And that question, um, just uh, as, a, uh, as an add-on to the final comment that Pavel Wopatka gave, uh, maybe you would like to elaborate on that, Pavel. Uh, I'm sorry, that, that Pavel Raczyński gave, maybe you would like uh, to uh, add on to this, uh, Pavel. Yes, so uh, th thank you. So yes, we we've done a couple of um, couple couple of, of interesting and innovative projects. So uh, last year we uh, we cooperated with Museum of Fine Arts uh, Fine Arts in in Wrocław, where we developed an uh, AI solution AI uh, application that allows people allows visitors to the museum to ask questions of what is painted on the picture by uh, Michael um, Lucas Leopold. The, the, the painting is called uh, Rai, which is paradise. So anyone could ask a question, for example, uh, what is, uh, why, um, who is on the picture or uh, whether Adam and Eve had, uh, had siblings or for example, um, uh, how many how many fruits are on the picture and the system would uh, uh, respond in natural language in Polish language uh, providing the, um, the description so we developed that uh, that application together with um, with museum of fine arts experts to give, together with our uh, CSR community and uh, we also invited not only our employees but also um, the students from the PTEC program that we we work with similar or similar in the innovative nature we developed a, um, a project with national philharmonic orchestra uh, from from katowice that, that was a project uh, that is called nosp ai which allows uh, end users to ask questions about classical music so for example uh, what uh, uh, how many how many um, how many strings uh, a viol violin has or uh, why why a conductor is standing um, uh, is standing in front of the orchestra but uh, is showing the back to the to the audience and we developed that project with also uh, with external partners uh, with uh, with Fujitsu, with Miasto Katowice, city of Katowice, and also with our uh, with our students that uh, that are part of, of the tech program. So these are just the two examples uh, that I wanted to highlight. Pavel Raczynski, thank you very much. Um, I know that there are multiple examples uh, of such uh, cooperation uh, with NGOs, with external partners, um, uh, with uh, government officials, with state officials and so on. And looking forward in our post-COVID era, um, it seems or so uh, scientists and researchers predict uh, there might be more interest in uh, the cooperation and especially in the so-called giving back to the communities as we move forward. So um, we keep our fingers crossed there will be more and more of such endeavors uh, in the I uh, IT outsourcing space. And moving on to the next question, which uh, one of you um, kindly asked us. Uh, can you summarize from your perspective what are the arguments for IT outsourcing in Poland? And I know who is very passionate about it, and it might be Paweł Łopatka, who is so super passionate about this topic. Uh, Paweł, would you like to uh, answer this question from our uh, participants? Definitely. But before I answer, like Paweł, really great example. I really like it. And uh, I, I hope that uh, we'll have more and more like CSR projects that we can actually develop and uh, help communities around. So so thank you for that example. Really great. So outsourcing, summarizing outsourcing uh, pros, pros and cons, maybe pro. Uh, it's like I think we discussed all of us, all of us uh, during this call and the rapper, the white paper will show it uh, pretty well. So maybe all other participants, if I will miss something, just please add it to the list as well. Yes. But what for sure is there is like uh, attractive operating cost and development infrastructure, especially telecom, telecom infrastructure. Uh, maybe rated higher than most other European countries, yes, from my perspective. Definitely low prices comparing like living cost uh, in, in our region as well, but also proximity to Western Europe. I think we are pretty well established from time zone perspective. We can serve several markets here as well. 
the language skill set is uh, pretty good on our market. And I think uh, highly developed uh, engineers like labor and technology market, especially now with huge demand on high value services. I, I think this is the, the key summary that I would give it uh, here now. But Paweł, maybe Bartek, maybe other points you would like to add to this summary. I think it should be like maybe even common approach here. <laughs> there certainly are uh, very many more of those uh, given in the white paper. So if you allow in the interest of time, I will direct our participants to uh, uh, to the white paper, which they will uh, receive. But Pavel, thank you very much for, for your take uh, on it. Uh, there is a, another question, and uh, forgive me by saying it will be the last uh, question which we'll address today. But interestingly enough, um, it may be interesting uh, for Komar, who is our um, uh, host of the meeting, uh, who delivered uh, this meeting together with the partners. And uh, Bartłomiej, if I may address this question uh, to you, since uh, it actually talks about Komar. Um, and one of our participants asks, I recognize Komar mostly by variety of software products. Why such a software house decided to become IT outsourcing provider? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could you please take that question from our audience? Of course. Uh, well, it's actually uh, the type of question which uh, um, in our unit, I mean, infrastructure and, and, and managed services unit at Comarch, we hear quite often. Uh, it's, a, it's a good thing that Comarch is recognized uh, by, uh, by software products. It, it, it means that they are good and they are, uh, uh, they are well known uh, across the world. Um, however, it's... It, my role always to highlight that uh, we are not only software uh, manufacturer and, and, and provider, we also provide uh, services around, as mentioned, data center and IT outsourcing, uh, managed services. Uh, why? Uh, um, the answer is very simple. We, uh, Comarc as a, as a software manufacturer started already in, uh, in 1990s with first server rooms to uh, provide, uh, to host this software. The software for for its customers yeah and uh, since we started with that and then built up our own data centers and gathered uh, uh, even more and more uh, specialist uh, system administrators um, uh, and other uh, other personnel in that area um, we started to provide these services not only internal but also external and uh, it uh, didn't take long when the customers asked how about you provide uh, us also with a uh, network operating center or uh, more service desk services? Yeah? And we said, why not? We have personnel. We can extend our uh, portfolio services. And this is how it how it grow. And uh, now we have a very strong um, ICT uh, unit where we provide all of these services. And a very uh, important topic for today is, of course, IT outsourcing. Uh, and still, we provide uh, service desk uh, services for our software customers, Comarc software customers. Uh, that's still the case, but we have now a very big portfolio of our own, so to say, ICT customers uh, purely uh, providing um, IT outsourcing, managed services, and so on. So uh, this is how it looks like, and I'm proud to be part of this growth. Uh, and uh, always happy to uh, explain why. <laughs> This is looking like this. Okay, fantastic. I don't know if it's good news or not, but I still remember Comarch in the 90s. So that's bad for, for me, I guess. <laughs> but some of the younger participants of our panel discussions might not remember, but it's it's a good thing that they will now see the new face um, and uh, the, the new iteration of Comarch uh, with it going in, um, in various uh, new directions of um, of business, including um, IT outsourcing. So ladies and gentlemen, um, this has been a very fruitful uh, panel discussion. I thank our um, special guests. Uh, let me thank Paweł Raczyński, Paweł Łopatka. Let me thank Bartłomiej Kluska uh, for uh, taking part and finding some time uh, to share their insights with us. Uh, but most important of all, I would like to thank uh, all of you, <clears throat> our participants, for taking the time to be with us um, and this topic of IT outsourcing, as you see, is not only hot, but uh, uh, most of us uh, are very, very passionate.
Uh, and uh, we try to share uh, uh, in the short span of time whatever is possible. Um, there are more questions in the chat functions which we see which remain unanswered, but please do not worry. We will uh, come back to you and answer each one of them following this event. Also following our roundtable uh, discussion, uh, uh, an online uh, version of this recording will be available to you along uh, with uh, a white paper titled How IT Outsourcing Becomes Part of the New Normal. And ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for being with us. This concludes our session. Uh, we wish you uh, very smart and uh, insightful business decisions in the area of IT outsourcing. We invite you for more discussions offline uh, with us. Um, uh, we also wish you health good health in the uh, era of uh, post-COVID and a uh, new normal. Uh, this was an event brought to you by Comar uh, in cooperation with its partners, IBM and SoftServe. Thank you very much to all of you. Uh, see you soon. All the best.